designing and building a sailing rowboat. Instead of building a kit, it's really been enjoyable to design a boat, learning from other boats, but actually drawing it, making it have the features that I want. You can put a little outboard motor on the back of it. Uh, there's going to be a seat in the middle uh, for rowing and row locks and oars, but it's a sailboat and the, and the design is skewed towards making it be a good sailboat. And uh, it's a sailboat with a simple rig, uh, what we call a stayless mast. Uh, it's got just one um, sail, the main sail, so you got a main sheet and a halyard, that's all you need. So it's a boat that um, you can row around in shallow water, a couple of guys can pick it up, it's pretty light. But it's a real sailor. Well, there's a fair amount of rocker. There's a fair amount of curve along the bottom or the keelson of the boat. And as opposed to being sort of flat across here. And that means that it's going to do better at uh, dealing with waves. And also from side to side, you can see a little bit on the fore and aft views here. There's a fair amount of V angle. And there again, the ability to ride through waves and... Uh, resist having them come over the side or over the front, over the bow. The curves, you take what a lot of people call a batten or engineers would call a spline. This boat is going to use plywood. This approach of building out of plywood means that you can build it much more quickly. You've only got two pieces instead of planks all the way across the boat. It'll be upside down so if you can envision that. We're going to put the bottom on first and we'll be able to just trim that piece after it's rough cut near the edge we will be able to trim it to that frame instead of having to precision cut it in advance. And then the side piece same deal you get it close you put it on and then you trim it off on this face. We're not going to paint it so we're going to put uh, clear uh, epoxy thin fiberglass cloth on there that you won't even see to make it really strong and then urethane over it so you'll have a natural wood finish and people really enjoy looking that's a natural wood boat. Put a nail in here to measure back off. From the bow back, we should have uh, the first rib at two and a half feet. Two feet six. Now, you can see I'm, I'm going to make these ribs out of half inch material. Uh, I want the widest piece of it to be on the mark. So, ten foot six. And this material is a half inch thick, so we'll draw the half inch line, and this is called R4, T for transom. So we got our strong back sides marked out, I think. And with a little luck, it's going to remain right side up until we've got the boat Nearly done. We need to create a reference line both above and below. This is going to be a reference line running right down the center of the strong back. Got the level resting against the nail head down there. All right, we're going to start with R1. Here's our baseline, here's the center line. So R1. Laying out the actual ribs on this piece of plywood. So we got four foot eight, that's more than enough width. Then I got a center line. The basic shape of each of these ribs, they're only two and a quarter inches wide, could nest. And try to imagine the shape of the boat at R1. The uh, bottom piece of plywood does a tremendous twist right across there. It also has a curve. The, the, the bottom lays down across this curved shape here. I have a slight radius over top of R1 at that point. So we're going to use a batten to do this curve.
first real parts of the boat uh, made. Just thinking about how much fun I think this is. Here's our one. You know, maybe someday if things work out, this will be out on the water and we'll be having tons of fun and adventures with this part going out into out into the lakes and uh, even maybe the ocean and before we try to actually position these each of these we want to put a piece across tops of each of these ribs <laughs> Looking from the stern of the boat toward the bow here, the daggerboard trunk comes back from this point. So uh, we can't just do a straight brace across here. That'll be in the way once we go to install that daggerboard trunk. But the key is, I can use a square on the strong back for this vertical and be very, very close to square with this reference line. It's still really hard to think about videoing and not making a mistake at the same time. An interesting challenge. We need a clearance of two inches at our one. R1. Same with R2. We got R2 sitting right over the slot for it and holder for the daggerboard trunk that'll mount here and sit there and then the main rowing thwart and daggerboard thwart will be in that space. Here's the former F3 and R4 sitting right on its slot as well. So that leaves us with the transom. So here's the transom. The transom's slightly different case because in this design it's angled. And we know that the top of the transom needs to be at that 14 foot line. So we took the angle here and have made a couple of wedges. We are going to arrange them on the outside of the transom. We want this point to be held at our 14 foot line for the boat, which is right here. potential outline of the boat. Start stretching some battens and testing these lines and seeing what they look like. Second guessing the curves uh, by running temporary stringers along the lines. I'm suspecting this may be a little too much. Really high-tech rig here. From the stern running along, you know, from the side a horizontal perspective. You can see how even a tiny little adjustment here can make a difference as to how these lines will will look. It looks to me like you come along, shine and the shear 
are looking really good until they cross over R4 down there. It looks like it's going up a little unnaturally. I'm gonna need a new transom, I think. And here's where I've arrived. This is the old transom. We're going to take these select pine one by twos and rip them down. We cut out the uh, rippers from the birch plywood. That will be the Keelson. There's a concept called scarfing. What we're going to do is cut a very shallow angle. Uh, we're going to run the circular saw, putting that on uh, this straight edge and running it along. We will get a very narrow angle cut. I think we're in the good enough zone there. Milestone in the boat project. First, epoxy. We'll be using epoxy for not only the glue parts, but also a layer to totally seal uh, the wood of this boat. West Systems 207-105. Uh, 205 is the normal uh, hardener for this uh, West Systems epoxy. 207 is special in that it's for clear. So we want to bring out the wood grain. We don't want any milkiness. It's a two to one ratio. So one pump here and one pump here will automatically give you the right ratio. We've got these one by select pine that will be installed along the chine and along the shear. And we need to scarf join these again. Well, let's glue these up. So what I'm doing is sliding until we kind of get contact there and marking it. So as we take it loose to apply the glue to both sides, kind of relatively simple to put it right back. How to set the keelson down in something that is an ever-changing angle. 
We want the bottom of the plywood hull to stop at a one inch gap. And the reason is, we know we're gonna have a skeg here. We know we're gonna have a dagger board coming through here. That will provide sort of a reference point how deep to cut in to let this three inch strip, which is the keelson, sit down into these ribs. Made a little pattern. That's the width. Got the keelson notched in, and this now gives me the opportunity to draw out the shape of the stem. Looking down, what you would see, you can see that as opposed to this, and I'm thinking that's what I'm going to go for, work out what the shape of this stem needs to be. Uh, brought the chine intersection point back by taking the uh, bevel off of our one projecting that full size. Here's R1 coming down. Uh, that's the Keelson coming across. Lay this guy right into our scaffolding. Take a break from software business problems and think about solvable problems here. The transition from the keelson to the stem, these plywood sheets are coming in, they're quarter inch uh, on both sides, and so what you've got by that point is this. Uh, strips of mahogany built up around there that cover the ends of the bottom plywood or side plywood. The stern of the boat we've got a situation where we're leaving a one inch gap a flat spot on the top of the keelson and the bottom plywood pieces are going to be uh, cut down vertically to leave that gap and uh, toward the stern that's actually a skeg and in the middle there there's a dagger board trunk. How do you get a, a nice gradual transition from this on the bottom to this on the front? So I've drawn my one inch and we're going to let this one inch face gradually shrink and maintain that one inch gap which involves carving back that tiny little face of this quarter inch plywood until there's uh, the, the right width that we're basically at one inch. Let's cut out the interior stem here. Shine pieces to have a nice wide place to land as they'll be wide and they're going to get it up here. This is going to support the um, rail or little deck boards running around the shear and this will brace against our one. Our cheek pieces to make sure that this plywood as it's coming on a relatively sharp angle compared to here has enough surface. That's but I don't think most of this is actually going to get carved away. Let's see what that looks like. other pieces from here to here and from here to here we're going to make out of the abundant bits of scrap half inch that we have laying around. Got a uh, pattern cut out for the upper leaving room for the shear stringers to come in here and for the chine here that'll be plenty of cheek for the plywood to land on.
not too bad. Did some uh, cleanup and final sort of fit of our stem here. So it's time to probably commit and get this all glued in along with uh, getting some mounts back here on the transom. So we've got our shine coming along giving this angle. We know the actual piece is going to be sitting in like this. Beveled provides additional gluing surface for the plywood there. And then at the same time have it on the bevel heading off to the next point. So I'm going to say that's pretty good. Committing to uh, the taper here. It's pretty good. We got to do the other one. I think we've got a pretty decent curve going here. If you look along the chine, and now we can really see the chine and the shear together. I think in both dimensions that's looking good. This will be the last cut before trying to actually glue these guys into place. I'm not seeing anything too alarming from the stern. Actually looks pretty good as a compound curve. So there it is, sort of in the light of day for just a moment. Sweep up, put some plastic down, and then we can start gluing.
Checking on the uh, set of the epoxy from gluing on our stringers and keelson, the, the chine and the shear. And uh, the acid test is our brush rock hard. So that stuff all went off really well. But with a little luck, we got ourselves a frame.